guys, how's it going? This is Ebba Duba. Today we're going to do the June 2019 paper. Okay, the June 9, 2019 paper. I'm going to explain to you uh, the answers. I'm not just going to give you the answers. I'm going to explain to you. And we're going to have very interesting discussions such that you will be at least at a better advantage in terms of answering these questions. Because there is a sense in which these questions, they kind of... Uh, similar from paper to paper so the first question question number one it says which nutrient provides energy so the nutrient that provides energy it should be carbohydrate okay that's why you see most staple foods across the world they are carbohydrates sadza um cassava bread rice all those they're carbohydrates because we constantly need uh, carbohydrates for our daily work so carbohydrate and then the other options just uh, just, uh, just just some quick notes vitamin c it's responsible for development and um for for the body to function normally okay so normal development and uh, function of the body so it uh, touches skin skin uh, it touches touches vision as well uh, nutrient absor uh, nutrients absorption it also touches that and bone and teeth growth and it also boosts uh, uh, a little bit on, on the immune system side. Actually, this vitamin it actually comes from a word uh, vital amines. Okay, so vital amines, this phrase. So amines, there are some chemical compounds. If you're doing chemistry, you probably know amines. So the misconception was that vitamins, they are amines. So later on, they realized that they aren't, and then they removed this A. And then it just became uh, vitamins, okay? So that's it. And then fiber, use it for a healthy digestive system, okay? So peristalsis for it to be smooth. The movement of uh, food in the bowels. Fiber, it's very good. You find fiber in maputi, whole grain foods. Iron, you find iron uh, in the blood, okay? Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, the red pigment that gives blood, that, that gives blood its characteristic color. That one it's uh, made from iron so let's quickly move to uh, the second part second part what does this say second question it says what's the function of the gallbladder so the function of the gallbladder is to is to store bio okay so it's to store bio not to produce bio bio is produced in the liver it also produces urea quickly move to the next question next question says the photograph uh, it shows a condition due to more nutrition What's the name of the condition? So you're already, you're already given more nutrition. And here they, they want to trick you a little bit. Because most people, they think more nutrition, it's not having enough food and it's that cut and dry. But also having you know, too much food can cause more nutrition. Mao, it simply means upset. It means um, uh, the wrong way of doing something. So if your nutrition is wrong in any way, that's more nutrition. So obviously this person is very uh, big bond, so it's obviously obesity. Okay, it's obviously obesity. Let me let me show you. I actually have uh, some some pictures here to illustrate. So this this one, it's um, someone who is obese. You you can see that this 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 diagram here it's similar to uh, the diagram that we had previously. So that's the thing. This diagram here it's similar to that previous diagram that we had and this condition is kwashioka so kwashioka it's a lack of protein so when when a baby doesn't have enough proteins they have kwashioka um, so yeah and then this one is called anorexia so it's caused by many factors so anorexia it can be genetic some factors can be environmental as well like uh, prenatal complications complications during childbirth or complications before childbirth and even psychological and social problems as well there are some some um, in some cultures um, women who are very slim they are kind of more marketable so there's a race to you know lose weight as much as, as they can so it can overlap also with uh, some psychological conditions like uh, body dysmorphia where somebody sees themselves and they don't realize that uh, you know they're Thin, so they actually want to get extra thin. The way that they see themselves is in the way that the world outside of them sees them. Okay, so that's anorexia, then uh, kwashioka, uh, this baby here, 
and then obesity uh, this this many year so let's quickly move to the next question next question says um, Benedict solution was added to a food sample the mixture was heated a brick red color was observed which food component was present so here the key is um, you're told that this is Benedict solution so Benedict solution it's used, used to uh, test for reducing sugars okay so there was a change a color change here I think Benedict solution it's a uh, pink in color okay so since the, uh, the color changed from pink you have to check this because I'm just taking I'm just saying it off my head but this one it must be uh, the color must be pink and it changes from pink if it's uh, if they are reducing sugars present then it changes to brick red okay so the uh, test for fat, for fat, I think it's the uh, emulsification. You can rub on a special paper, and then when the paper becomes translucent, then you can conclude that there is uh, there is fat. And then for starch, you use iodine solution. So and then for 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 protein, you use what's what's called the pyrrhate test. Okay, that's what you use for 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 testing for proteins. Uh, let's quickly move to question five. Question 5 says, during anaerobic respiration, what happens? Uh, this one says, um, oxygen is used. So here the buzzword is anaerobic. Okay, Anaerobic means N, the suffix here, it means not. So in the absence of oxygen, the respiration that happens in the absence of oxygen is what's being discussed here. Aerobic is the respiration that happens in the presence of oxygen. Uh, so what happens uh, here? It's uh, it says uh, oxygen is used. No, obviously we say it in the absence of oxygen. Alcohol is produced. This one is tricky, just because anaerobic respiration can also be uh, for yeast as well. So let's let's hold on to B part and then look at the other options. So if it's yeast, then you would expect that alcohol is produced for real. If it's uh, in humans, you don't expect alcohol to be uh, to, to be to be produced. In the C part, we're told that lactic acid is produced in uh, plant cells. This one, it's uh, it's wrong. Lactic acid, it's produced in muscle cells. So when you're exercising too much, your body needs sometimes um, the, the energy expenditure there to be too much. So the body will try to give you energy without using up, uh, you know, extra oxygen. So when, when it does that, um, lactic acid accumulates so it's actually for animals, not, not plant cells. So a large amount of energy is produced. No. So here it would be alcohol is produced. Okay. So anaerobic respiration, alcohol is produced. And uh, I think this is also the process for fermentation. Uh, traditionally, they actually use this to uh, brew traditional beer. Let's quickly move to next spot. So next part says the diagram shows the structure of an alveolus which gas moves in the direction of the arrow. So the direction of the arrow is this one here. So this one here, this one is the alveolus. This is the air sac, okay, or air sac or alveolus. So here the air will be coming from inside the alveolus and then into, into the, uh, from, from uh, the direction of the lungs and then into the, the bloodstream here. So this alveolus will be facilitating that. So the air that will be coming in, obviously, it would be what? It would be oxygen. It cannot be carbon dioxide, uh, carbon monoxide, or carbon dioxide or nitrogen. These ones, they are then they are not the ones. So the air which will be coming outside from uh, the body system into the the alveolus, that one would be obviously carbon dioxide. But then coming in, it's oxygen, obviously. So let's quickly move to question seven. Question 7 says the diagram shows a plant cell after it has been placed in concentrated salt solution. Okay. Obviously, you uh, are now thinking osmosis, which is uh, correct. Which substance moves in the direction of the arrow? So this cell, it has water inside of it. So if you put a concentrated salt solution outside, you create a, gra uh, a, a, a gradient, a diffusion gradient. So the water would diffuse to from the place of high concentration to uh, the place of low con low concentration. So outside there wouldn't be any water, so you'd expect water to move out of the cell and then going outward. 
so water will be the one uh, moving in the in that direction yeah so just a recap concentrated salt sol salt solution has very little water compared to the cell so there is a diffusion gradient so what um, what actually moves from the cell outward let's quickly move to question eight question eight says uh, the diagram shows the internal section of a blood vessel what's the function of t so these ones what are their functions this one you should know they prevent backflow uh, of blood that's their function so they 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 are certain veins that that pump pump out blood so those veins um the part of the function is that they, they the blood is not pressurized so if it's not pressurized now you actually need these so that there's no backflow of blood so it's to prevent that backflow so this one you should just know and let's quickly move to question nine question nine question nine yeah so the diagram shows the human circulatory system which blood vessels a b c or d has um which is blood vessel a b c or d has blood under highest pressure under highest pressure it has to be the iota okay this one here so you just have to identify it which one is it the iota is it pumps it pumps water blood from from the heart to the rest of the body so you'd expect this one would be the iota okay so the answer here would be c it has the ice pressure and also that's why it's a thick walled okay so let's quickly move to uh, the next part next part which is question 10 where we we'll stop for today so the a, a woman starts her menstrual flow on the second day of april when is she expected to ovulate so uh, the first day of menstruation she has to go through five days and then afterwards uh, she has to go a certain number of days but from the start of her menstruation to when she expects she's expected to ovulate it's about 14 days okay so if it's 14 days starting from the second obviously you'd expect to uh, have to ovulate on the 16th on the 16th let me, let me show you um, a complicated diagram here but uh, i just let's see uh, i just hope uh, you'll be able to understand it I'll try to explain away some other stuff from there. So here is the diagram. So the, this diagram, um, you see this part? This is, this is the part where, the spot here. Let me uh, check a, yeah, so this part here. This is when the uterine wall is um, breaking down and then, you know, this is menstruation, basically. So it goes through, uh, you know, for, for about, uh, five days and then all the it starts to build up and then on the 13th or 14th each day you start to see ovulation here so between when menstruation starts and when ovulation starts there's about 13 to 14 days so that's why we we uh, chose that one and say um, um that's why we we chose 16th of april okay since you started on the on the 12th on, on the second okay so she's expected to ovulate here so thanks so much for, for watching we'll look uh, at the, the next 10 questions in the next video uh, please make sure you like share and subscribe it helps others discover our channel so thank you cheers